Now to new details about that deadly police shooting in Minneapolis. A bride-to-be killed after calling 911 for help. We're now learning more about the police officer as her heartbroken family demands answers. We're going to hear from the mayor of Minneapolis in a moment. But first, ABC's Lindsay Davis is on the scene there for us with new reporting. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, Robin. You can see the alley where she was killed right behind me. Answers are trickling in very slowly. While we still don't know what led up to the death of Justine Damon, we now know what caused it. The medical examiner is ruling her death a homicide from a gunshot to the abdomen. Our hearts are broken. And we are utterly devastated by the loss of Justine. The fiance of meditation and yoga instructor Justine Damon is now pleading with Minneapolis police, asking them to explain why an officer shot and killed his future bride. Sadly, her family and I have been provided with almost no additional information from law enforcement. The 40 year old, originally from Australia, is seen in this video oh, from 2015 wow. talking about her spiritual journey. Um, I'm originally from Sydney, Australia, and we have a beautiful tradition there. She was getting married next month, but that all changed Saturday night at 1128 when she called police to report a possible assault in the alley behind her home. Female screaming behind the building. Just four minutes later, officers on the scene reported they'd open fire. 530 and Copy 530 CPR. There is no dash cam video of the incident, and both officers' body cameras were turned off. Like you, I have a lot of questions about why the body cameras weren't on. The Minneapolis Star Tribune says Damon, in pajamas, approached the police SUV parked at the end of this alley about 100 feet behind her house. They say she was standing at the driver's side of the vehicle when the officer in the passenger seat reportedly reached across the vehicle and opened fire, shooting her through the driver's side door. That officer identified as Mohammed Noor, a two-year veteran of the force. Noor, a Somali American, joined the Minneapolis police force two years ago and has had three complaints filed against him. Two are still open. The 31-year-old has also been sued after a May incident where a woman complained he grabbed her too roughly. Sources close to the investigation tell ABC News's Minneapolis affiliate KSTP Damon was shot two to three times. Investigators say no weapons were found at the scene other than the officer's gun. Noor and his partner are now both on administrative leave, and Noor's attorney released a statement saying that Damon's family is in his daily thoughts and prayers and added that Noor joined the police force to serve the community. Robin. All right, Lindsay, thank you very much. And now the mayor of Minneapolis, Betsy Hodges, joins us. We appreciate you spending some time with us because uh, I don't have to tell you the the grief, the, the outrage, this happened on Saturday. Still no explanation as to how or why this happened. Are you satisfied with how police and investigators are handling this thus far? Uh, well, first I have to agree to you, with you. This is just a devastating thing for our community, for the country, for the world, really. It's just tragic and awful and disturbing. Uh, and we, as a city, have a policy now that we do not investigate ourselves and so uh, uh, in, in critical incidents like this. So the, the State Bureau of Criminal Apprehension took over right away. They uh, have been the lead investigator. Uh, I encourage them to give as much information as swiftly as possible, but not compromising the investigation. Uh, but I have the same questions everybody has. What happened? But you're the mayor and the family of Justine, aren't they deserving of some explanation at this point? Something. Yes. I mean, I've, I've spoken to her fiance. Uh, you know, he has the same questions everyone has. Um, but we need to make sure that there's an investigation so we can answer those questions thoroughly and well, whatever happens. Um, but I. I, I don't know what the answers are. That's the trade-off of an independent investigation is uh, we aren't in charge of it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I know the BCA is doing the best they can and, and, and moving as swiftly as they can, or I hope so, and I hope that they uh, release as much information as they can as swiftly as they can. And one of the many questions, of course, as you know, the body cameras. I mean, now Minneapolis police are required to have them. Neither officer had turned his on. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's one of the many questions that you have, like the rest of us. Why? 
Yes, absolutely. You know, I fought hard to make sure that we have body cameras. They're a very powerful tool. They're not an infallible tool, but they're an important tool in 21st century policing. Um, and I don't know why it wasn't turned on. I don't know what happened. That's one of the key questions that we have as this, uh, you know, as the investigation moves forward. Do you know if it was ever turned on? We know that it wasn't turned on before, but even after there is procedure that's saying that you should turn it on. Do you have any idea if at any time it was turned on? I don't know at this point. The body camera data and footage is with the investigator and that's independent from the city, so I don't know. And finally, uh, Mayor Hodges, um, where do we go from here? Uh, you are, are fully aware of the frustration and um, how do you maintain trust from citizens when something like this happens? It's, uh, it's been a question this whole country's been trying to answer, mm -hmm. and in Minneapolis, um, you know, I and the chief have been working very hard to put the foundations in place for 21st century policing. Uh, you know, body cameras are one element of that. We have made policy changes. Uh, we've enhanced our training. Uh, we're doing community policing and putting the resources in for that. Partnerships and collaboration between the community and law enforcement creates both trust and public safety. All of those, plus more, are elements of 21st century policing, and we have got to keep pursuing that, and we are continuing to pursue that uh, moving forward. Well, yeah. Hope well, again, Mayor Hodges, thank you for your time, and hopefully some of these questions will be answered soon, primarily for Justine's family, and we're thinking of them and your community. Thank you, Mayor, very much. Thank you very much. And those answers cannot come soon enough. Nothing about this Nothing. makes any sense. It doesn't.